Jacob and yeah, I'll be showing you some little useful tips in Maya. Alright, so let's ju jump right into it. A lot of people ask me which uh, rotation mode do you use. Uh, by standard, it's in Locus, you can really grab this and turn it around. And, um, it makes posing a character very easy because you can just like grab it, move it around, don't worry about like any weird axis popping up. When you hold E pressed, when you press the left mouse button, you get this little pop-up um, menu. And you can there choose your rotation modes. So you have local, gimbal and world. So right now we're using local as a check mark um, shows us. But if you jump into gimbal, that's what actually happens when you rotate your character. A lot of people might have heard of gimbal lock. And that happens actually something even when you're in local. Local is just a way for you to to make it easy for you to show some, and if I jump back to local, you can see like, oh, I still have all three axes, I can turn in Z, I can turn in X. But if you look in the, in the channel box, actually, you can see that all values are kind of being moved. If I, if I move now on Z, you can see like all the three values here start changing. And that's actually something you sometimes don't have to care about, because you just pose a character and the pose is important that you want to get in. But um, Sometimes it's also very useful to know what you're actually rotating. Oftentimes when I know, okay, I just want the dog to go left and right, I go into gimbal and simply just animate the Y curve. And you can see only the Y curve is really being affected. And if I turn the X, same goes for the X, I turn the Z, same goes for the Z. And it sometimes gives you really the control to separate your, your rotation axis into like, okay, Z is only for tilting the character axis if I want to make him like go up and down, and um, the Y is just for turning around. So um, sometimes it's really useful to split them up, especially with arms, when you say like, okay, the Z axis is really only for going forward and backward, and the X is only for rotating the wrist with it, and um, yeah, the Y is then for, for, for going out. Yeah, I think so. Don't be, like, even if you start animating local, it doesn't mean that you have to stick to local. A lot of people always think, like, oh, I'm animating local, so I have to stick that. If I go into Gimbal, all the curves get fucked up. Yeah, it's just, like, different different uh, way of, sh of showing to the user. Local is really just to, to help you in, well, actually, Maya's figuring out all the Gimbal stuff that's happening underneath. So, but if you switch back to Gimbal, this is how they actually look like. So, already here, you can see, like, that your X is crossing your Z, and it's... It's, uh, you kind of start losing control, especially when it goes too far, and these curves tend to like really get close to each other, and then you lose one axis pretty much. In this case, I simply just jump to local, I turn the cam character the way I want it, and then you can always go into your graph editor, and there's a feature called um, Curves Euler Filter, and that will recalculate the curves so there's no weird flipping flipping going on. So once you have like the, for example, uh, a lot of times what happens, your wrists start to rotate weirdly. And then you just go into curves, you left it, and that should usually solve the problem. Um, the, thing, uh, the, the same thing goes for um, translating the character. There's, um, if you do the same thing what we did with E, you can also hold down W on your uh, keyboard, press left mouse button, and there's like object, normal average, world. If you go into world, you, you rotate the character, you stick to the coordinate system you're having right now. So if you want to go Z and X, it looks fine for now. But if you start going to the head and do the same thing, Z, you can see like, oh, all of a sudden, even though I just moved into one axis, it's X and Z being affected right now. And that's because this controller is laying underneath this one, and this one's pointing that direction. So I'm actually not sticking to the coordinate system that I'm in right now. And even if you go into object mode, it's still moving both axes. And that's not, that, like, I don't, I don't like that because then I'm, I'm kind of getting messy with my animation curves. What you need to do is, actually, we like this. Um, you need to go into axis, live object axis, and this is now your actual um, coordinate system and, and uh, curves you can use. So now, even though I turn the head, it still shows me the coordinate system the head is in. The same goes for everything else. Like if you, if I would rotate this, it would show me. Here it would say like, oh, that's actually weird direction pointing, but that's how the curves are set up right now. So um, if I go into X, I only move X. If I go into Z, I only move Z. 
So if I animate character, I'm usually really only sticking to using live object access mode to this alone. As an animation method. So I make sure before animate, okay, I press W, left mouse button, access, live object access. You always want to be aware of what you're doing, so I would really recommend you animating in uh, in that mode. Sometimes it's it's useful if you want to animate into a specific direction and the the, the system the coordinates are kind of weird right now um, to jump to a different mode. But usually, I don't know. At least I really prefer like animating this mode.